Hey guys, um, so this is the last section in chapter 9, and this is geometric series. So geometric series are a lot like arithmetic series. Uh, they follow the same basic principles, except you have different formulas. Uh, so we're going to be answering the question, how can you model the sum of a geometric series, and define geometric series and find the sum of geometric series. So for your vocab, a geometric series is the sum of the terms of a geometric sequence. So we learned arithmetic has a common difference, so you're going to add or subtract a constant amount, whereas a geometric series has a common ratio, so you're going to multiply or divide a certain amount each time. To say that an infinite series has a sum means that the sequence converges to a number n that gets very large, so it comes to a point. Um, when an infinite series does not converge to a sum, then the series diverges. So converges, diverges, means you can find, means you can't find. So here's the formula you need to know for um, the sum of a finite geometric series. So S sub n equals A sub 1, which is your first term, times 1 minus r, your ratio raised to the power of n, over 1 minus r. So make sure you write down that formula, you will need it. Um, also, r cannot equal 1 because that would make our denominator be 0. So r is either going to be less than 1 or greater than 1. Okay, so what is the sum of the finite geometric series? 3 plus 6 plus 12 plus 24 all the way to 3072. So what's happening each time? Well, we're multiplying by 2 with each one. So um, we're going to use our formula for our uh, geometric series, or sequence, so a sub n equals a sub 1 times r raised to the power of n minus 1, because we don't know how many terms there are, so we're trying to find that n. So we know that our nth term is 3072, and we know that we our first term is 3, and we're multiplying by 2 each time, raised to the power of n minus 1. So go ahead, divide both sides by 3, and then you get 2 to the n minus 1. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, because you'll be here all day trying to figure it out, but not all day, maybe like two minutes. So 2 to the 10th power equals 1024. So that means n has to be 11, because 11 minus 1 is 10. So we have 11 terms between 3 and 3072. So then we go ahead and plug that into our summation formula. S sub 11 equals 3, our first term, times 1 minus 2 to the 11th, divided by 1 minus 2. When you go ahead and simplify that, you should get 6,141. So that's the sum of all the terms. Okay, what about this one? We have a summation from n equals 0 till 20 of 4 times 1 half raised to the power of n. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do, I'm going to get out my pen. Okay, so I'm still going to use this formula, this um, S sub n equals A sub 1 times 1 minus r to the power of n over 1 minus r. Well, our first term we know is 0, because it says it right here. So S sub n equals 0 times 1 minus r. What's our rate? Our rate is our exponential growth, or decay, 1 half raised to the power of n. How many terms are there? There are 21 terms from 0, because we have 0, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way to 20, over 1 minus 1 half. Okay, when we go ahead and we simplify this one, you put it into your calculator, you should get the sum is approximately 8. And that's not a very big number. Oh, I forgot my 4. a sub 1 is not 0. I'm sorry. a sub 1 is 4, which is right there. That's how you get 8. Alright, um, so in the book there's this story of this soldier. Um, it's apparently a really famous story of a soldier who rescues a king during a battle and the king says I will grant you anything you want within reason or with what I consider reason from the riches of the kingdom so the soldier asks for a chessboard 
And on the chessboard, there are 64 squares. And he asks for, in the first square, to be one piece of wheat, or one kernel of wheat. In the second square, to be two. And then the third square, to be four. And then eight, etc., until all 64 squares are filled. So according to this story, how many total kernels of wheat did the soldier request on that chessboard of 64? Well, we know that our first term is 1, because he asked for 1. It's doubling each time, 1, 2, 4, 8, etc. And we know that there are a total number of 64 um, squares on the chessboard. So if we just go ahead and plug this into our formula, S sub n is 1 times 1 minus 2 raised to the 64th power divided by 1 minus 2. So you can put that in your calculator. Um, make sure you use your parentheses correctly. You should get 2 to the 64th minus 1, which is about 1.875 times 10 to the 19th. Um, so if we take 10 to the 19th, if you remember your rules of scientific notation, that means that there are 19. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so that's where your new decimal place is. Um, here we go. That one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. I'm not quite sure what number that is, but that's a really, 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 really big number. Um, and I'm not sure if the king knew math very well, because that doesn't seem like a reasonable amount of kernels of wheat to me. Maybe I'm just crazy. Okay, for a finite geometric series. So if a series is finite, um, the first term and your common ratio has a finite sum, which means at some point they're going to end. So you take your first term divided by 1 minus r. For an infinite series with a ratio that's greater than or equal to 1, there is no finite sum. Um, the numbers are too great. You can't um, even make a prediction. All right, so does the series converge or diverge? If it converges, what is the sum? So I have 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth plus, and then it continues. So in order to find whether or not it converges or it diverges, we have to find out what r is. And do you remember how to find our ratio? To find ratio, you take like term 2 divided by term 1 or term 3 divided by term 2 to find out what that ratio is. So if you take 1 half divided by 1, you get 1 half. Is that less than 1, equal to 1, or greater than 1? And that's less than 1, so that means our series is going to converge at some point. Um, so in order to find that, your summation is 1 divided by 1 minus 1 half, and 1 minus 1 half is 1 half, and 1 divided by 1 half is 2. Okay, so what about this one? We have a summation from n equals 0 to infinity, of 2 thirds times negative 5 fourths raised to the power of n. So in order to, um, we have to look at our ratio. So our ratio is negative 5 fourths. And we take the absolute value of that. Is 5 fourths greater than 1? Yes, it is. So this diverges. There's no summation that we can possibly make. All right, so here's your lesson check. I want you to do these questions. Um, to evaluate the finite geometric sequence and determine if, it's, um, if it diverges or converges. This is your lesson check you're going to do with your partner uh, first thing in class tomorrow. And your homework is Lesson 9-5 and the Chapter 9 practice test. The test will be on Thursday, and we're going to start Chapter 10 on Friday. All right, hope you have a great night.